we hadn't really appreciated this whole concept of non-linear and linear, but they could see that tape was a linear system. You couldn't be as creative and as flexible because you had to lay a shot down, record the next shot onto tape, record the next shot, and if you suddenly just wanted, well, that's, I don't really want that second shot at all, you, you, you had to go another, you had to make a copy, a new copy, and actually then edit that shot out as you made that copy. And that was going to be a rather tedious process because the, the whole art of filmmaking is doing lots of changes all over the place. Also, if you're copying it back in the old days when it's composite, the quality oh. goes down, so it gets fuzzier and fuzzier, fuzzier the more you do fuzzy. it. Absolutely. In fact, I do remember in the very early days when we... Were, I worked on a pilot for a direct, with, a, with a director friend of mine for the B, but it was some like, pub conversations. And our technical and training department said, we just got in... A, an early VHS offline. Would you like to have to use that as a free as a free edit? And I said, oh, it's fine. So I said, yep, okay. So I had a little quick bit of training on how to use it, and so we we, we transferred the rushes off Umatic or whatever it was onto to VHS, and and then I started editing, and I you know went a generation, and then right I said let's start cutting it down a bit, and so I did this edit, and um, I said to the director, what do you think? Is that all, is that all right? Me trimming it there, and he said. I'm sure it is, Rod, he said, but when I can't really see the picture, I'm not sure how I can judge it. <laughs> because I really was. That was before SVHS, mm. and it was too, pu yeah. purely composite. And honestly, just even going a generation, yeah. it was looking pretty awful. But anyway, so to move back, we, we decided that we were, yes, we were going to start to go um, and start training people to be able to use the pneumatic system. We didn't have an agreement at that point with the unions. Um, which was rather, I mean, the un I say we, the, the unions hadn't come to an agreement to the fact that, okay, we could produce stuff on pneumatic, but would the television centre recordings department accept it from us? Current affairs would, because we did provide editors as film department to Nationwide and, and Panorama, who wanted film editors to cut their programmes, and the news department who actually did the transmissions that said, yes, yes, we will accept that. So the first two editors that trained were from Nationwide and I was on the second course and one of them was another Nationwide editor and myself was basically out in the general service area. And I remember after I had been trained, three weeks of training, so they, we, we, we sat in a little classroom at Ealing and there was a couple of camera crews and there was a couple of the two, two editors. When it finished, I wasn't actually allowed to do anything because the unions hadn't come to an agreement yet for the for to for us to actually, for me to cut something and then for me to pass it over for transfer to one inch. Um, but when, when I finished the training, one of the things we did was the film department said out to, 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 to production in general, we will offer you a free half day's filming with an Ealing crew with a portable single camera. We, sorry, we called it portable single camera. We had to give it as an acronym. And, yes, and, and we called it PSC, Portable Single camera, camera, which was the def you know, for a, a pneumatic camera, separate recorder with a cable, which the sound recorders hated, um, and uh, the BVU edit system, like we have over here behind me. 